Chapter 2 Free to a Good Home James was waiting for Mandy by the bicycle rack. He had a worried look on his face. James was a year younger than Mandy. He was in the same class as Katie. He and Mandy had been friends ever since Mandy had helped him choose his puppy, Blackie, from a litter of black Labradors. I thought you were never coming, James called as Mandy hurried toward him. He swung his school bag onto his shoulder and got on his bike. Race you home, he called, pedaling off. Mandy cycled quickly to catch up with him. Wait, she said. I've got something important to tell you. They rode side by side as Mandy told James about Katie's kittens. Six, James exclaimed. He took one hand off the handlebars and pushed his glasses back onto the bridge of his nose. His bike wobbled. That's not going to be easy. I know, Mandy said, but I promise to try. Will you help me, James? Of course I will, James said. He loved animals almost as much as Mandy. They cycled through the small village of Welford toward Animal Ark. Animal Ark was the name of Dr. Adam Hope's and Dr. Emily Hope's clinic attached to the house they lived in. Mandy usually won the race home from school, but today she lagged behind. Her mind was still on Katie's kittens. Come on, Slowpoke, James called. They reached James's house and stopped outside the gate. Blackie was looking out of the front window. He always watched for James to come home, and he started barking excitedly when he saw him. Don't forget to ask your mom and dad about the kittens, Mandy reminded James. Okay, James said. I won't. He pushed open the front gate and went through. I'll see you after dinner. Yes, see you later. Mandy waved as she pedaled quickly off toward Animal Ark. When she got there, Mandy dumped her bike by the clinic entrance. She ran inside. G Jean Knox, the receptionist, was on the telephone. Mandy wandered around looking at the notice board. Her heart sank. Several other people had kittens for sale. That would make it even more difficult to find homes for Katie's. On the table was a pile of pamphlets telling people how to take care of their pets. Mandy thumbed through them. Kittens, puppies, hamsters, gerbils, birds, bunnies. There were hints on how to look after almost every kind of pet you could think of. The Hopes believed it was important for people to know how to take care, good care of their animals. As soon as Jean put down the receiver, Mandy blurted out, Can I see Mom and Dad? Are they here? Jean looked at Mandy over the top of her glasses. I'm afraid your dad's gone out on a call. Your mom's here, though, if you want to see her. Mandy rushed into the clinic. Dr. Emily was packing some medicines as Mandy came into the room. Her red hair was tied back, and she wore a stethoscope around her neck. Her white vet's coat was draped across the examining table. Hi, Mandy, she said. Did you have a good day at school? Yes, fine. Thanks, Mandy said quickly. She wanted to tell her mom about Katie's kittens. Her words seemed to tumble over themselves. And they're moving very soon, so we don't have a lot of time. Oh, Mom, we've got to do something to help. Dr. Emily smiled gently. No, calm down, Mandy. This will take some thought. She finished putting the boxes away and sat down. Six kittens. Mandy, I don't know. It is an awful lot. Mandy hoisted herself up on the examining table. I know, but there must be someone in the village who wants them, she said. And they are free. Yes, well, Dr. Emily said, that will help, of course. And I could tell people how to look after them, Mandy added. Yes, I know you could, Dr. Emily said. James is going to ask his mom and dad, Mandy told Dr. Emily. Good, the more people who know, the better. What will happen if Katie can't find homes for them, Mandy asked. She felt suddenly afraid. She hadn't seen the kittens yet, but she knew they would be sweet. Dr. Emily looked glum. I don't know, Mandy. It's not going to be an easy task, you know. Welford's small, and most people already have pets of one kind or another. I know, Mandy said sadly. That's the trouble. You could put up an ad in the waiting room if you like, Dr. Em Emily said suddenly. Oh, Mom, can I? Mandy's eyes shone. 
She jumped down. I'll do it now. What will you do now? said a voice from the doorway. It was Dr. Adam. He came in and put his bag down on the table. Mandy gave him a hug and quickly explained about the kittens. I see, Dr. Adam stroked his beard thoughtfully. And Katie wants to find homes for them all? That's right, said Dr. Emily. Another pet rescue, then, Dr. Adam said. His eyes twinkled as he glanced at Dr. Emily. They were both used to Mandy's schemes to help pets. Looks like it, Dr. Emily replied. I know Katie's family, Dr. Adam went on. Mrs. Green brought Tabby to me a few weeks before the kittens were born. She needed some vitamin shots. I'm sure they'll be grateful for your help, Mandy. I know Katie will be, Mandy said. She was so worried about the kittens, Dad. I know it's not going to be easy, but I've promised I'll do everything I can, she added. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, starting with that ad. Mandy ran out to the waiting room. Jean, could I borrow a marker and a piece of white cardboard, please? What on earth for? Jean asked. Mandy explained quickly. I see. Jean opened her drawer and took out the things Mandy needed. Mandy sat on one of the chairs. She chewed the end of the pen and looked thoughtful. What should she write? Something that would really catch people's eyes. She began writing. A whole crowd of kittens, six cute kittens, free to a good home. Apply to Katie Green, 16 Meadow Lane, or Mandy Hope at Animal Ark. Mandy handed the ad to Jean. Would you put this up on the board, please? Jean got a couple of thumbtacks and went to put the, up the sign. She stood back to look. It looks great, Mandy. It does stand out. A good home, she quoted. Are you hoping that one person will take the hole? She chuckled. Crowd? Mandy sighed. It would be nice if all the kittens stayed together, wouldn't it? It's going to be bad enough losing their mother, let alone being split up from their brothers and sisters. Jean nodded. Yes, but I don't know who on earth is going to have enough room for six kittens. No, Mandy said with a sigh. <sighs> Neither do I.